Hi, intrepid viewers. Greetings from Australia. It should be summer, but it's not quite. Okay, as I often say on this channel, so much crime, so little time to cover it. So we're just going to leap in. Now, George Santos, who may or may not be Brazilian, whose name may or may not be George Santos, people are so over him that... Um, there's a new move to expel him from Congress, led by a Republican from Mississippi. Oh, you live long enough, you see it all, don't you, really? Um, so let's just dive in, have a look at George Santos. Will they have the votes this time around to actually expel the blatant criminal. They don't have a good record on this. I mean, you know, really. But let's see. George Santos. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Okay. So this could be Santos himself who's created this situation for himself, or it could be Congress members feeling their hands are tied a bit. It's that thin end of the wedge. If they do this for him, will it happen to others? This is the constant dilemma, isn't it, with all this mass criminality going on, you know. However, I think they might, they might actually do it and the reason they'll do it is because he is a blatant fool. Not that their glorious leader isn't a blatant fool, right? But it's like a bridge too far. Here's justice. I think Republicans may be thinking it at least shows that we do something because I don't think they've passed any legislation or they're not doing any governing. They may as well do something. Right. Anyway, so I think they may get the votes. That's one thing. Now, in other news, while I'm shuffling, Ruby Freeman and Shay Moss, the two women who um, were defamed by Giuliani, um, you know, you know the story. The case was so dreadful that Giuliani didn't even contest it. So he's been found guilty of defaming them. And so now another case will go ahead. How big will the compensation be? That's the only question under discussion. So I think they'll get a generous payout. I'm not going to actually read on it. They deserve it, you know, going forward. Okay. Now, Hunter Biden. His lawyers now are wanting to subpoena the Yeti because Hunter Biden is making the argument, and I think it could be proved, um, that he was a political target. You know, he's just, you know, not the only American with mental health issues to buy a gun and lie about his mental state. You know, the jails would be full, would they not? So will Hunter Biden have success in subpoenaing the Yeti? God, he's not going to have a free minute next year, Trump, you know. Be... Oh, my God, it'll be like, what state am I in today? What court am I in this week? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but will Hunter Biden have any luck with subpoenaing the Yeti? Let's have a look. Hierophant. Oh. Hangman reversed. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Now, the Hierophant is the big bossy card of the major arcana. Okay, the pillars of convention and the court system and all of that stuff. 
turns up first. Walking away, I'm not mad about this card, which would indicate to me maybe not the Yeti, but he might get someone else fairly high up to be subpoenaed. Okay. But what he gets here, and he does get three major arcana out of four cards, the hanged man, which is things being held up, reversed, maybe there'll be a bit of movement on this issue. And the strength card, I'm happy to see that. So if I put these two as bookends, I think Trump will get away with it. But with the strength card here, I think someone else will be nominated fairly high up. Okay. Now, you know the guy whose surname is Floyd? Um, he represented black voices for Trump. How much was he paid? Really? Now, he was out on parole. He broke his parole conditions by defaming dozens of people and talking crapola and doing all those things. Farney Willis now wants to revoke his bail. So, and send him to jail. Now, I was listening last night to Legal AF. I'm sure most of you know the channel. It's part of the Midas Touch. <coughs> and a woman lawyer was saying, this case that I just described, he broke his conditions he will now go to jail. It's evidence that there is a two-tiered system of justice, in case you needed a reminding, in the US because Trump has done that and worse and is still strolling around. She makes a good point, right? In other news, Mar-a-Lago, um, Palm Beach Town Council or something, they're really over the Yeti's events because it causes traffic problems. So they're thinking very seriously of some sort of sanctions on the events he can have because he thinks of it as his private palace, but it is technically, legally, a country club. You know, we'll see what happens there, but I'm not going to go into the fine print. Now... Um, in other news, Biden's team is weighing up going on TikTok to try and access young people, and I think they should. Their problem is TikTok is Chinese-owned. But you've got to meet people where they are, and young people aren't on Facebook anymore. Sorry, that's us. <laughs> We're on Facebook. They're not. Will the Dems bite the bullet and go on TikTok? Will they do it? Oh, God. At least they're thinking about it, but oh, they're so bad at getting the message out. Come on, Dems. Oh, they need the youth vote. They need it in 2024 and they need it into the future. But will the Dems go for TikTok? I think this is really important, much more than it sounds, and I'm going to do a bigger spread because I think it is really, really absolutely imperative to connect with young people. Emperor. In turn. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Now. In the middle, we have the Emperor, which is often my Yeti card. But in this, I'm, th I'm thinking in the Emperor more just as the old guard Dems, the old corporate Dems who, you know, seem to think we can operate in the same way we did in 1982 and that'll be fine, right? I think it represents stone throne, not very flexible. These are the ones, and I'm talking the top level of the Dems here, 
who constantly shut down the squad, any progressive ideas, you know, they're their own worst enemy in a way, you know. So that's that rigidity. But they are talking about this. I think we will see some movement on this, and it might even not just be TikTok. They might work out that social media is where it's at, heaven forbid. They better get there before the Republicans. Really, they need to. Okay. I'm optimistic. The world. Hello. Go global. You know, go global. And youth culture is a global phenomenon. So do it, do it, do it. Outcome card, Ace of Pentacles, I think they might do it. This is a new approach, new idea, new energy, new way of conveying your values. Put it out there. It's cheap in terms of pentacles. It costs like nothing. Okay, I think they're going to do it. Ah, dare to hope, dare to dream. Why wouldn't they? Oh, just stupid beyond belief. Now, I'm working up to the big topic. With the leaked videos of Jenna Ellis and Sydney Powell, ooh, wow, fabulous. And it was a defence lawyer who admitted it. Good on him too for standing up, saying I don't want other people to be regarded suspiciously. I did it. Good on him. Um... But this is a game changer. So let's see here. But before we get to that, there's a very big story attached to that, but I digress. With the shutdown looming again and still, they're talking about getting some wriggle room to January 19th for this agency and February 2nd for that agency. What is this rubbish? You know, this has to change. It's a systemic problem. It's not Dems or Republicans. It's a system that allows whoever's in opposition to hold up things and relies on handshake deals for the biggest economy in the world it's a crippling process that has to change. This begging for the budget rubbish. I just have to say that. Okay, but, 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 okay. The juicy story, I think, and it was revealed by Jonathan Carl, who's a journalist. Yeah, I think that's his name. With these leaked videos... Right. How to put this? It's sort of, it's, it's, um, I don't know why I'm struggling to say it. Maybe it's because I haven't had a second coffee, but it's really important in terms of how America operates into the future here. So let's look. In a way, the big revelation, the huge revelation, get your act together, Lena, is he explains, and it was in our face, and I don't know how we all missed it, why the GOP drank the Kool-Aid after the insurrection. Because we all remember the footage, Lindsey Graham, everyone else going, this is it. We've indulged him to now. No, no more. This was an insurrection. We feared for our lives. What did Trump say after that? It's been revealed now. He said, if you don't support my lies about the election being stolen, I am leaving the Republican Party and I'm starting my own party and I'm taking all my voters with me. That was the revelation. Thank you, Jonathan Carl. He threatened them. And that explains why three days later they all went, oh, well, you know, Right? That's the real story. And doesn't it make sense? Isn't it screamingly obvious when you think about it? You know? 
Okay, so with this, I'm going to finish now with um, a few cards for you guys, you know, a few cards to sort of help you focus on this next little while because it's hugely important going into what we call the silly season, Christmas. And I will just explain, Australia actually goes off the grid from Melbourne Cup, which was two weeks ago, horse race that stops the nation. We sort of go on mental holidays from then through Christmas, through New Year, to the end of January where we have Australia Day. And depending where you sit politically, you either call it Australia Day, celebrating white Australia's occupation of country, or you support Aboriginal people and it's Invasion Day. So, but nonetheless, basically two months off. I don't know how the country runs really through December and January, but we manage. But at least we don't have to crawl on our hands and knees to get a budget through every five minutes. And there was an interesting, if you're interested, go to the Washington Post today, talking to Congress people. They're exhausted by this process with the endless shutdown threats and having to do these appropriation bills and stuff. They're absolutely exhausted. So now... Let's have a look for you guys. Have a few cards. A little bit of help. Don't forget to Saturday Night Live, 7 p.m. New York time, EST, Hogarth, Lady G and me. And we do that every week and we have a lot of fun. So join us on Hogarth tomorrow. In the meantime, these are for you. Oh, oh. I'm loving it. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Five of Pentacles. This is you guys feeling exhausted, drained, betrayed, unheard. You know, this is the bleakest, you know, in your quiet downtime, how you feel. This is a reminder to look at the light in the window, right? These people are walking past the light. Talk to people. The Page of Wands is a good talker. Talk with young people and listen to young people, okay? Their vote is really important, so... Bridge the intergenerational divide wherever you can, just in your mini world. Could be nieces and nephews, could be semi-adult grandchildren, could be our young viewers, hi, young people, right? This is about the voice of young people. And the judgment card. This is a blast of the trumpet by Angel Gabriel. And those of you who've been watching me for five years, this is my Wake Up America card. People coming out of the comas, coming out of the coffins. It's like not a demand. It's simply saying, what can you do? Is there something you can do? And, of course, there always is. So that might be volunteering uh, next year, let's get over the silly season, early next year, volunteering for voter registration. It could be talking one person into voting who either isn't registered or they weren't going to vote and you manage to convince them. That doubles your vote. If you're retired and you have skills, how can you employ those skills maybe on a volunteer basis once a month? But it's equally important to look after yourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually. Look 
after yourself so you can have the energy to tackle next year. And doing good things attracts good things. Things multiply. So I'll leave you with that thought. You guys take care and I'll see you next time. And Sunday is the Argentinian election. And because I've spent time in Argentina, I'm heavily invested. Will the maniac Trump look like? Get in or not? Oh, por favor, no. Ciao. Bye now.